Hi everyone, uh, thank you very much for joining and thanks for the great uh, introduction. Uh, it's really exciting to have so many people join the hackathon this year. It's, it gets bigger and bigger every time we hold it. And uh, I think this is certainly the future of events like this is to, to have them online and, and get people from all over the world to join. It's, uh, it's really exciting to see. All right, let's see if I can share my screen now. So um, I'm just going to, I've got a kind of a fairly short stack of, of slides today. I'm going to be talking a few times this week, um, but I'll start off the week just with a quick introduction to NFCore. Um, as Gisela said, there's quite a lot of people amongst you who are fairly new to NetFlow and to NFCore. So if you've been around for a while and you can go and make yourself a cup of tea or something, uh, if not, just treat this as a, a refresher for what NFCore is and, and how, how we all work together and, and how this thing is organized. So uh, my name is Phil Ewells. I work in Sweden at the Science for Life Laboratory, SciLife Lab. And I work at a platform at SciLife Lab, which is uh, the Swedish National Genomics Infrastructure. So we work with very large amounts of um, genomic sequencing data from research groups all over Sweden. And, uh, and this kind of drew us to start building these pipelines with Nextflow several years ago. And so at a, a Nextflow hackathon, a Hacks Nextflow meeting back in 2017, I think, I uh, started talking to a few others in the Nextflow community about how we could standardize our various um, Nextflow pipelines and kind of start to work together. Um, namely, uh, Alex Peltzer, who was at the time at Cubic, uh, and also um, so with some group in Singapore, um, and, and a few others. And so because of that, NFCore was born. Uh, and the, the idea was really to try and stop everyone from having to rewrite the same versions of the same pipelines and to come together on a set of kind of best practices. Um, so with that, and of course, this is a tagline on the homepage, which gets kind of trotted out every time I give a talk. It's a community effort to collect a curated set of analysis pipelines built using Nextflow. This of course only makes sense if you know what Nextflow is. Hopefully some of you will have been in the, the Nextflow training this morning, or at least following along with it or be kind of familiar with it. But it's a workflow manager which allows you to chain together different steps in an analysis pipeline. Um, importantly, it works with virtually any underlying compute infrastructure. So it has built-in support for cloud, as we saw, as well as traditional HPC. So we use it with the Slurm job scheduler, for example, and, and all kinds. So it works virtually ev everywhere. And it also has built-in support for software packaging. So uh, Conda, Docker, and Singularity are the three which we work with the most in the NFCore community. Um, this means that you don't have to install any software which is specific to a given Nextflow pipeline or NFCore pipeline. Each NFCore pipeline comes with all of the software it needs. So all you need to have is Nextflow and then one of these three. And that means that the reproducibility and the portability of every NFCore pipeline is it's superbly high. Uh, and if you've been around in bioinformatics for a while, it starts to solve an age old problem of when you want to run something new, it takes you a day to just get all the different dependencies and everything. That, that's the thing of the past now. Okay, so that's, that's next flow. NFCore, what is NFCore? At the heart of NFCore really is just a set of guidelines. Uh, it's a community who comes together around these guidelines and we kind of agree this is the way things should be done. These are the best practices that we're going to adhere to. And that's really, that's, that's it. Guidelines and kind of adhering to them is, is kind of tough to, to manually regulate. So we started building a set of tools to kind of automatically check these things and also to help you work with these things, um, kind of helper tools. So these are nothing to do with the running a pipeline itself per se. They're all fairly generic. Uh, and these are written in Python because that's what we are most familiar with. Um, but they help you as a developer and also as a user, as we'll see later. Finally, of course, what most of us come to NFCore for is there's a set of pipelines that we kind of provide and build as a community. Uh, and as, if you're a user, then that's kind of the main thing you come for. You don't really need to worry too much about the guidelines and the tools and everything. If you go to the NFCore website, you'll find this big list of all the different NFCore pipelines along with descriptions of, of what they do and what they work on. Uh, I updated this slide a few days ago, so I hope it's still valid <laughs> that we have a, currently have 25 pipelines with a release, which means that they're, they're effectively stable. 
Uh, 14 pipelines under development, so no no active release yet, but um, that doesn't mean they're not usable. And then three older pipelines which have now been archived. And this is kind of a typical any NF core pipeline can be any one of these three. Unlike some other bioinformatics kind of listing services, uh, NF core is not somewhere where you can build your pipeline, come along and kind of add it to a database so other people can find it. That's not the idea. We don't want to just collect as many pipelines as possible, kind of the opposite actually. We want to have just a curated single minimal set of pipelines. So we want to have one pipeline per data type. So we want to have one RNA seq pipeline, not 20 that you have to choose from. That one pipeline can have lots of different options and be run in different ways and be configurable, that's great. But we want it to be a single set of pipelines so that it's very clear as to which one we promote for each type of data or which question we want to ask of the data. All of the pipelines that were listed there should be very, very reproducible. I've hopefully hit that point, as well as the software, which is wrapped so very reproducible, as well as the, uh, the, the way that Nextflow can be moved around and everything. Every pipeline also comes with a, a digital object identifier, a DOI, which is specific for the pipeline. And then there's a specific DOI for every single release of that pipeline. So that means if you use a pipeline, you can cite that DOI in any publications. And anyone can go and find the code from that pipeline from that specific release. And if they run that, the software container is tied to the release. So if you rerun your analysis, it'll be running with exactly the same versions of the software with exactly the same versions of the code. Uh, and if you specify the same version of Nextflow, then it should be basically completely reproducible in theory. Everything we do with NF Core is held under open source licenses with MIT. So your rec is kind of strongly encouraged for you to take these chunks of code and use them for whatever other projects you want. And you go off and build off of NF Core, that's completely fine. With the NF Core tools, the helper tools, we try to make them flexible enough that they'll work with any Nextflow pipeline. This doesn't have to be specifically NF Core. So of course, that's our primary target. And finally, all of those pipelines, because they are all past those automated tests, because they're all being checked by the NF Core community, we can say that they all adhere to best practices for bioinformatics and, and open computing. Uh, very happy to say that the NF Core project was published quite recently in, uh, in Nature Biotechnology. It came out eventually in February. Uh, this was a big body of work worked on by much of the core team uh, and it took a long time to get through for various different stages of preprint and then and then review. Uh, the whole paper was completely rewritten several times so if you have read the preprint it's worth going back and, and rereading the, the final published version because it's a very different beast. And it's quite easy to read the, the the paper itself is just a short letter so it's not very long at all and we kind of go through the basics of, of how NF Core is set up in these three pillars of kind of deploying pipelines of this community participation and, and then kind of different features we have for developers. Um, if you look in the supplementary materials, that's much longer than the paper and that's sort of a paper in itself really. And that goes into many more details and specifics of how we, we, we run the NF Core community, the automation that we set up, how we keep everything synchronized and working and actually how this thing works at scale. There's some nice graphs in the back, which of course I, I like because I made them. <laughs> showing the, the size of the community and how we've grown over time and, and how, how quickly we respond. Now, when we made these, we of course knew that they'd be out of date the moment we, we, we sat them into a file. Uh, and so we did it in such a way that all of these are actually live on the NF Core website. So if you're into that kind of thing, you can go and check out this URL and, and you'll see the, the live data of exactly how many Twitter we users we have, like followers we have right now, etc. So this is really fun. You can, and you can see on these graphs that the NF Core community is really still growing fast. We, we haven't plateaued and, uh, and every single day we're getting more and more people using pipelines and more and more people involved in contributing to those pipelines. To give you a feel for what that looks like, back in 2017, we were just three. Three people, three institutes, three people on GitHub and that's when I created the, the NF Core GitHub organization. Um, Within a year, things had already started to take, take off a lot faster than I expected. Uh, Paolo, the main developer of, of Nextflow, had already kind of retweeted a couple of tweets and started to get a bit of a following, a bit of an interest. Uh, and by 2019, it was clear that this, this project was really starting to take off and, and had, a, had a place in the bioinformatics community. Now in 2020, we are starting to have uh, 
in the high hundreds to, to even thousands of people involved. Um, the Slack community is massive with lots of people coming to Slack to ask for help and also to, uh, to, to kind of discuss how to contribute. Lots of people making issues and committing code on GitHub and a lot of people following what we're doing on NFCore. On top one, the institutes, that's the, the contributors page on the NFCore website, uh, which shows a list of all the different institutes across the world where people are using NFCore. Uh, so if you haven't already, it's, it's very much appreciated if you can go and add yourself to that page. It's just a quick pull request to a YAML file uh, with your institute name and, and logo. And it really helps to kind of show uh, that we're, we're global and, and that, uh, that people are using these pipelines. And then if people go to that site and they find the associated name in an institute, they recognize they know who they can go to for, for help or advice. So these are those contributing institutions. Um, it'd be great if we can get a few more in some of those blank places in the map, for example. Uh, and it's, it's brilliant to see what started off as quite a European centric um, projects and, and still does have a European focus, but you can see we're starting to, to make inroads all over the world. If we look at who's visiting the website, that's a bit more of a, a spread picture, um, but it still sort of roughly conforms to a similar, similar kind of spread. Uh, and when you look at these stats, I mean, it's just, I think it's fantastic <laughs> of how many different people we have and how many repositories and just what a huge, huge body of work this represents. Right, I'm gonna, gonna stop there and, and, and pass on um, to Federico, who's gonna talk about how to actually use these pipelines and, and how to run them if you're new to Nextflow and new to NFCore. Uh, there's four main places that I'd recommend everyone to get involved with if you're interested in NFCore. And all the work, all the code is done through Git and GitHub. So we have the NFCore uh, organization. If you just drop us a line, uh, either on, on the instructions on the website there or NFCore slash join, then we'll, we'll send you an invite and then you have uh, access to work with all of those repositories right away. The main place we communicate is Slack. So it's an NFCore Slack. Again, if you go to that URL, you can get yourself an invite with just a click of a button. Uh, and we, we organize all of our discussion in the different channels of the, the NFCore Slack organization. We broadcast what we're doing over Twitter. So if you're a Twitter user, hop on there. And then increasingly, we're starting to use YouTube to, to put things up there. So for example, this talk is being live streamed to YouTube and, and it will stay there so that people can, who aren't able to join us live today will be able to watch this at a later date. Uh, we're also hoping to put up more kind of tutorial material there and other help material. So, so jump, go to the website, check out that URL and make sure that you're, you're involved in all those four different channels. Uh, and with that, I'll, I'll leave you for now and I'll uh, pass you on to the next speaker. Thank you for your attention.